order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here, roll call, please. Commissioner McDonald. Here. Commissioner Downing. Here. Commissioner Heideman. Here. Commissioner Dunn. Here. Commissioner Greytown. Chairman. Commissioner Baum. Here. Chairman Rushing. Here. This time, could I have a motion for additions? Point of order, sir? Yes. I would like to make a motion that we make the temporary chair for the night. As much as it pains me to do that. Support. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. Any opposed? Me. <laughs> Six one. <laughs> All right, this time we'll move to number three, additions, deletions, and changes to the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. All right, moving on to four, approval of the agenda. So moved. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Oh, we just did the line. Yeah. That was for the uh, any changes, additions, changes. All right, moving on to number five, minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move that we approve the minutes of the May 19, 2016 commission meeting and also the standing committee uh, meeting minutes for June 2nd, 2016. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. All right, moving on to number six. I see we have no proclamations, so we'll move on to seven, the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 7A through 70 on the consent agenda. Support? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. All right, do we have any uh, reports of the standing and special committees? Let's start with you, Mr. Okay. Nothing. I have nothing, sir. Commissioner? Uh, Boom. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to take team this a little bit with Howard. Um, first of all, if we look like we're going through this stuff fairly quick, uh, our structure, we have a committee meeting where all these things get discussed and then they get passed on the full board. So if you don't see a lot of discussion, that happens. It happened in the previous meeting. So, I'll start with that. Uh, today, Howard and I got a chance to go on an investor's tour in downtown Port Huron. Um, they took us to the Citadel building, which is owned by the Witt family. We went to the Sperry's building, and we went to the old Michigan National Bank building. Um, quite an eye-opener. You drive by, you don't really, I mean, you know something's going on, but some serious investment. I mean, that Citadel building, they've got to be putting a couple million bucks into that thing. How old are they all there? Uh, wow. Well, it's un unbelievable when you walk through there. The Sperry's building, uh, they're going to be doing the movie theaters. Um, the same individual from Grand Rapids, Chuck Reed, that owns the Michigan National Bank building, owns the Sperry's building. Um, putting, I think that's 11 million. 11 million, million in this building. Going into that. How far along are they? Uh, drywalling the upstairs. The upstairs um, further, um, further along. I think they're talking fall this year, but it's happening. It's for real. You know, when you drive by the outside of the building, uh, it still looks a little ratty. They're working on the windows, which is a big thing that they have to get the windows to meet the Michigan Historic Preservation thing. So they're going through a lot of that. But I can assure you, they're going full, full tilt. Uh, you know, on the inside of that place. It, 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 it is unbelievable. Yeah, the stuff that's going to happen in there. Same with the Michigan National Bank building. I mean, they're, um, uh, they're going to uh, be starting on that before long, uh, the demo work and stuff. So these are, I don't even know how much we're going to spend on the Michigan National Bank building. We've got to ask the question, but it's definitely going to be millions of dollars also. So that's some really um, um, good stuff going on. I think one of the interesting pieces of it when we talked to Scott Dean today and they were asking why the investment and stuff and they use it at uh, convention center as an example so kind of precursor to a lot of these other things. I know for the Michigan National Bank building when we had met with Chuck Reed before that was you know that was a big thing you go we go kind of situation. So 
Um, took a little bit longer, like anything, you know, you always put time frames on these things, but I can assure you that this stuff's happening and it's for real. So. Well, you know, after all the complaints over the years about these projects being pending and different grants not coming through, you know, I think the community's really become concerned that it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and to hear you say that you've been there, I mean, looking at the outside doesn't yeah, really much You drive by, eh, you but, don't want to see that on the millions is are being spent now. That's really yeah, urgent. It, yeah, it's committed. There's it's, there's no turning back on these things. It's, it's happening. So, right. thank you, Mr. Uh I'd like to uh, just mention the Wick building, uh, the uh, six units inside. But what I was most impressed with is they're putting that little theater in there. I had no idea it was going to be that large. It is going to be really, really neat. And then to go down and look at what's happening in the Sperry building, and what was it impressed me was how creative it is. I mean, that restaurant bar on the second floor is going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, you go down to the end, I, I imagine if you were to get a table, down on the east end of that, that room, the view of downtown Port Huron is just going to be spectacular. And then from some of the uh, uh, hall sides, you can get a view all the way down to Black River. I was really surprised at that. And when you talk about theaters, there are 27 to 43 seats. They're the Something smaller, like high-end you know, furniture, furniture. Chuck Reed actually you know, produces that stuff. You can have dinner, drinks, or theater. So it's not your traditional movie theater per se, um, but it's all first run movies. I, I have not been in the Magic Theater, but this is even that much, you know, better to set up. How many theaters are going there? Eleven? Uh, Eleven. Eleven? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to have your own private party, you can go there and rent, you know. It's, it's really a unique deal, totally, totally different than you. I think you're. Mm -hmm. You used to go into the movie theater. I've, I've seen one in downtown Kalamazoo, and it's, it's really popular. One in downtown Kalamazoo, you can actually take your dinner and drinks, sit in the seat, and watch the movie. Yeah. And the other thing that, I, and I'm sure uh, Jeff is equally as impressed with it as I was, they're spending $11 million renovating the Sperry. And they said 90% of the work was being done by local contractors. Yeah, that of, really impressed me. Uh, Watson Brothers, Stevenson, a uh, bunch of other folks. And we walked through, and, and uh, some of the workers in there recognized us. You know, they're local people. So that, that was really uh, great. And they said, now, don't be expecting to see a lot of work. Uh, and things happening down at the Michigan National Bank building for a little while. Uh, they have to do demolition down there, and they're going to make it, what's that energy efficiency status they're getting? Uh, or, do you know? Uh, LEED. LEEDS. LEED certification, is that what they call it? Yes. Uh, and there, there was some, uh, I think it said asbestos, uh, problems in the lower part of the Michigan National Bank building that they really wouldn't have to touch. Tile, tile removal. They tile removal. They could leave it, but they want to. The They're system. taking it out. They're cleaning it all up and to get the certification, the highest certification they get for uh, energy and environmental. One of his hotels is in the old Michigan National Bank building that was three years built three years ago before or after the one in downtown Fort Wayne. So it's very similar architectural and very similar to what he's going to do to him. It, it was, um, uh, the community is going to be really, really <coughs> pleased with uh, what's going on. Thank you. Carl Tomian, give us a plug on the cemetery meeting. Well, uh, I am the county's representative to some of Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments. So. That's the seven county region in Metro Detroit. And we, we represent uh, 1,300 uh, elected officials across southeastern Michigan. We actually have 
half the population of the whole state of Michigan is, is, is covered in some type. And uh, that organization has uh, 10 meetings a year of, of their executive committee. And uh, I, as your, I serve as your representative on, on the executive committee. And within our county, um, we have a representative from the city of Fort Huron representing cities and a representative from Fort Huron Township representing townships and, and sub-type. And uh, twice a year, we have what's called a General Assembly, and that's a meeting of all the elected officials in sub-type. And, and uh, the program is going to be held at, at the new Milwaukee Convention Center, and uh, our retired county administrator, Bo Kaufman, is going to be making a, a presentation on how the project was planned and executed, and uh, some of the related successes, which uh, we've been discussing this evening. Um, SEMCOG not only has this executive committee that makes legislative decisions like our board does for the county on a monthly basis, but during the General Assembly, they can, they can make uh, overall organizational changes. And at that level, they're organized into three caucuses. There's a county caucus made up of all county elected officials. There's a township caucus that's made up of all township officials. And there's a city and village caucus made up of all those individuals. And it's organized that way because there are certain issues that come about in local government that affect a form of government more than another form of government. And they're, um, they try to make sure that uh, there's consensus between large counties and small counties, between cities, villages, townships, and counties. And uh, it's, it's a, a very um, complicated organizational structure. Uh, but they, uh, the genesis of the organization was goes back in the days of the 60s and 70s when there were all sorts of federal grants across the country, you know, a huge amount of grants compared with what we're dealing with today. And the federal government required that all major federal grants had to go through a regional planning agency to make sure that all the communities that would be affected by the federal spending would be aware of it into uh, those decisions. Right now, uh, two of the biggest decisions that uh, we made were uh, approving the uh, widening of I-75 and I-94, which will be taking place over the next, the next 10 years. So at the General Assembly uh, Thursday, in addition to the, in addition to the presentation and the, and the caucus meetings, we're also offering a tour of the waterfront in the Fort Huron with an economic development event to it so that uh, we'll be taking the first hundred participants and giving them a pre-conference tour to see if a lot of the developers waterfront because one of SEMCOG's initiatives is, is the blue economy is trying to take advantage of our rivers and lakes in terms of growing tourism and, and increasing employment. So, uh, all elected officials that are members of, of uh, SEMCOG uh, will be attending the meeting. We're expecting around 200, 200 of, of the leaders there. And also at this meeting, we'll be electing our new chair our, uh, and our, our vice, vice chairman. All right. And, uh, for, if you're not aware, with our master plan, which the county is helping us with for Riley Township, a lot of things that SEMCOG does for all our communities, but Specifically with Riley, a lot of demographics and the information that we get for all the master plans, some guy does a, they do a lot of work. That's one of the things that we get a lot of information on. If you go on your one, it's not your website, but uh, you go on, I'm just happy to go there today with Riley, it breaks down you know, 40 different items with the demographics within just Riley Township. How many, uh, depending on your race and age, and didn't realize we had so few kids, most of us are uh, older individuals in Riley Township. The majority is. That's one of the things that some of that does. Uh, commissioners, if you want to go to that meeting, uh, Jenny Posey can get you registered. 4.30 is kind of the start, if I'm not mistaken, of the, 
program just so that it's kind of yes. a conference where you're talking. There are going to be a couple hundred of uh, other elected officials from our community. It's a great opportunity, really, to show them our community, show them the convention center. So I encourage any of you guys that get a chance to go to sign up and do some Jennifer Posey did ask that if we're going to do it by tomorrow. Yes, I, I would like to go back to our earlier discussions because the convention center has come up and, and it's kind of interesting that uh, we're talking about this ferry building and what's going on in the Michigan uh, National Bank building putting in the, uh, the uh, hotel there. Uh, it goes back to, I think, what, three years ago, Jeff, when uh, we got this call that Jeff Reed was going to be in town. Did we want to meet with him? Was that November uh, 2012? It's been, been a few years ago. And uh, we went down, we met uh, with uh, Chuck Reed, who was doing this various development. And we also at that time met with uh, uh, city officials. Uh, the mayor was there, calling around the vice, uh, the pro, mayor pro tem. Uh, Bruce Brown was still the city manager then, and he had uh, uh, brought them over. But Chuck Reed at that time told us that John Wheeler, who did the, uh, the double tree and worked with us on the convention center and the new restaurant, uh, Fravers, uh, told Chuck, you got to go over to Port Huron. There are interesting things going on there. And uh, Chuck Reed at that time mentioned he had never been to Port Huron. And that was his first trip. Dropped his wife off downtown, and then he went and met with the John Wheeler out at the uh, Doubletree and the convention center and all of that. And uh, that was three years ago, and now he's, he's a major investment downtown Port Huron. And uh, the thing that John Wheeler uh, stressed to him was the collaboration that was going on in St. Clair County, between the county and the city, that everyone was working together uh, for uh, the betterment of the community. So, it was actually ironically mentioned that I got Carrie running out to my truck. I got a bunch of cranes and magazines. They just did a, like a seven page insert on the brew out area and I'm going to copies for everybody. Probably have a couple extra copies if you guys would look at it. And it was a whole um, section on the blue water area, uh, St. Clair County, and everything that was going on. It's probably seven pages. Yeah. And that's one of the things that Bill Hoffman's going to be discussing in his presentation. It's not just the success of the convention center and the restaurant and the culinary school. It's the fact we got a new Holiday, Holiday Inn Express. We have a new uh, other hotel that we were just describing. And it was the scene. Exactly. And now we're seeing that St. Clair and Marine City are following along with similar initiatives. They're trying to renovate the St. Clair Inn. They're going to build a new, what's it called, build the Inn on Water Street yes. in Marine City. In and so all of these initiatives are, are taking place and they're really going to put St. Clair County, the whole county, on the map. All right, thank you. McConnell. I would just like to bring up, I've, I've been attending my, my townships and village meetings, and I went to three, and at all three meetings, the planning commissions were talking about getting an ORB ordinance, and they, they want to do this on their own because the county didn't do it. I get back and I'm talking to Sheriff Donnellan, and he's like, we don't want individual townships to have ordinances because how do people know where the township starts and stops, right? You're driving down a road, it's not a sign on every road. So I talked to, I've been to Lynn, Muzzy, Village of Cape Heck, City of Yale, Brockway, Grant, and Pinocchi, and they all want to see that we can do something with the, with the ordinance. Um, they, of course, were all on board yet at the previous time. So and that goes back to 2011. So Sheriff Donnellan and, and uh, Tom Buckley, they actually, there's an ordinance that they have ready that's been through council to look at it. Um, I would like to see us at least pursue again um, 
send the letters out because I believe that's what happened the last time. A letter was sent to all municipalities and to all the townships to find out if there's an interest and then there was a public hearing. It's about a 50-50 deal back then, 64. I mean, it was not a, um, you know, but, but there again, if we pass something here, individual townships can also opt out. And the reason that Tim ever, and Bill Graytop worked on this, so he can explain it better than I can, but um, the reason they want that county-wide ordinance is then for those that adopt, and it's the same enforcement measures for Across everybody. The because right now, you got 31 cities, townships, and villages, you know, and I mean, it's hard to kind of, okay, what's, I'm not going to become Riley Township, but what's Riley Township, and then I'm in a must-see, and then I'm in, you know, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, it's, uh, it's, you know, so trying to, uh, you know, get it. You know, it's pretty generic. When you read through the ordinance that was proposed, I mean, most of the stuff is state law, right? It's not something that, that St. Clair picked up and said, we want to do this. This is all the stuff that, that deals with, I mean, the DNR's looked at it, and everybody's looked at these things, and, you know, it, well, it's a copy of one that was up north, very similar to a copy from San Lake County. Sure, San Lake and Lapeer. Yeah, when we uh, first addressed this, I went to every one of the township meetings, uh, who I represent, and five of the six did not want it at that time. We definitely readdressed it, but then once you put an ordinance in place, then you have to enforce it. They can definitely opt out. Iowa Township has their own. And, what's that? Clay does. Right, Clay has a new one, and I've talked to Jay on this. And I think theirs is pretty useless except for the yeah, over in the island. Because the way they drafted it, you can't take a vehicle anywhere, even on a dirt road, because it's speed limits. Because you're not allowed to check my memory, but over there they drafted it that you can't take a, a golf cart type vehicle or ATV on any road that exceeds 25 miles per hour. Which every road basically, what's it, 30? 30. Okay. But those are two separate ordinances. Eh? The golf cart ordinance is separate from, the, from the other one. Right. But that's part of their ordinance when I, that, that could prove that. But, uh, so. so talking to Tim, Tim's hope is that, that people would at least give it a chance and say, look, let, let's try this. If it goes, I mean, if you're into it three months and you're finding out you have major issues, you can just go ahead and opt out and say, we want to get out now. He wants to let it go for a year. According to Sand Lake and Lapeer County Sheriffs, they have less problems dealing with it now that they've got an ordinance because they don't have the kids or whoever's driving these cutting across the field because they know they they shouldn't be on the road and that's where they were getting calls saying I got somebody trespassing on my property now they could go on the shoulder of the road and drive around and get you know the mile around to their to their neighbor's house or whatever so um, I, I would like to see us at least address it and if we don't then I know that they're going to take these ordinances and we're going to have them spotted around different places and I think that's more of a mess. Uh, I'm going to defer to Bill Graytop because he's the one that worked on this quite a bit back in the day. Bill, do you want to just... Yeah, we had, we, we copied two of the ones from up north, like you were talking. We drew up our own, which was very similar. But each one has to be a little bit specific to your community because you may have a particular road that gets excluded. Depends on, on safety and all kinds of things like that. So we went through, we drafted it. Uh, we went through it several times. We held two public hearings uh, at the county on two separate nights so that everybody could come in. Uh, at the time, I would say I had maybe three people adamantly against it. I probably had a variety of people that didn't care one way or the other and some people that truly wanted it. And rather than force the issue at the time, we decided to back up and just kind of let it sit for a while and then figured we'd come back at it again. At, at another date. Now that Clay has done their own, it tells us it's time to move before everybody else starts doing theirs so that we have this uniform piece that the sheriff can enforce through the entire county. If you have a local ordinance, the sheriff's not going to enforce it. Okay. So you want to take it and you want to make it county wide. And, and, and you're very correct in saying, right, that, I mean, we don't blanket this and say this is what everybody's doing. We have the generic side, and then the individual townships, municipalities, village, or city get to say, we don't want to have anything that's state road and east, they right? Can, I mean, they you, can exclude any road. You they exclude want. parts, and you exclude different roads. Um, you can get up and down some of the main roads, as long as they're not an M road or an I road. You can get up and down just so you can get around the corner and go a quarter mile. <laughs> so uh, there's lots of, lots of, lots of flexibility. Um, well, possibly you can get you and Bill, if you want to draft a 
a letter for every municipality and have Riley reconsider it and all the uh, townships that I do. If it's still going to be five out of six that don't want it, I'm going to not support it. But if I can get the majority but support it. But the opt out, correct? So if that, that's correct. Put a county wide. But if Al tells me a supervisor of Riley, he does not want it. Why? Uh, Tom, Thompson at, at yeah, uh, Wales. I, I hear, I hear. If I get five supervisors telling me they don't want it, my vote is going to be no. Because that's what I've been getting a lot of calls though, too on people that have the same way. Hey, these guys taking this thing off, and I was, yeah. you know, that whole. Well, I, I, I think one of the problems is when the communication comes from the county, it seems like, I think the view of some of the townships is, is that we're driving this. And you know some of the some of the townships that are in favor of this need to step up, in my opinion, and take some some sort of leadership role. So it doesn't appear that this is something that the, the county's trying to force down the township's throats. And Bill Dieter said last night. He called me up and he said, "You know what?" He said, "I got to take a little control here." And bring, Bill's in charge of it works with the MTA. Township. Yeah, Township mm -hmm. Association. Director. Yeah, he is the director. The director. So he said, I, "I've got to get it there and have it try to." Trickle in, he says, if you guys come in and say that it's the thing that we need to do, he said, this needs to be township driven. And he said, so I want to get with the townships. And he's been calling around too, and he's like, you didn't tell me you were there, you didn't tell me you were there. And I said, yeah, you got to see me. So, but he said, you know, <laughs> where else have you been? And I'm like, well, I've just been in, in my district. I'm not going anywhere else and talking. Um, but I just think it's hey, I, I, there's enough, enough people that are looking at doing their own, and they're going to do their own. Um, if we don't, and, and I, I know that scares Tim um, from that aspect of having too many things. I, I think that's a big item, is commonality, so there's you know, equal enforcement. Law enforcement. Well, equal. one definite positive for this, if it's a county-wide ordinance and the township support it, then you are you are not the enforcing agent. It becomes the county the enforcing agent, so you don't have to have an ordinance officer and have the expenses to enforce this ordinance. You have an issue? Call the sheriff up and they can correct it. So there's, it's got a lot of positives, some negatives on it that was addressed before. But uh, if you're going to have an ordinance, I definitely think a countywide one would benefit rather than an individual one. Because as soon as you have an, an ordinance like Ira or Clay does, the expense falls in their lap. Mm -hmm. So, so but to reiterate what what Greg just said, and that's the idea of opting out. If you can stay in it for one year. I think you're going to find that you will probably stay in and not opt out because it's not going to change anything. And if it changes anything, it will probably be for the better. I know there's one person out there, and I think we all know who I'm talking about, that is adamantly opposed to it and wants to opt out on day one if they do it. But I think we convince them to stay in for a period of time and see what it really does. Uh, if that's oh, they wouldn't be able to opt out at all. They'd have to be in for one year. We would, we would hope they would. We want everybody to give it a chance, yeah, give it a chance. instead of just saying no. Well, you take Fort Gratiot Township that I represent. I mean, it's really is the density there. You're going to have a very limited space in your township that's even going to be involved. They they are they're very concerned about opening up a, a really urban. It's an urban well, township. Well, I believe what will happen in Fort Grassy because they already have a substantial contract with the sheriff. The sheriff's already uh, there. They, they're out there, you know, 24 7, I believe, pretty much at Fort Grassy. Yeah. So they already have a vehicle in the area. This will bring Tim back in and we'll rekindle the discussion and get the discussion started again. Bill Gray Cup, I'm going to put you in charge of that again. So that's that with Mr. McConnell. Greg will do it, I'll help him. Okay. It's your, 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 your committee. Okay. That sounds good. Cool. Anything else? Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, at this time I have nothing, so we could. Um, this time I'd like to have Al Titus, the supervisor. I really appreciate we do this. Uh, try to go out through 31 communities uh, to four meetings during the year, and you have to allow us to come out here, so thank you very much. Good to have you. you. Please introduce yourself and the yeah. other officers here. I'm Al Titus, the supervisor. This is Dawn Sawicki. Hi there. Um, she's our treasurer. And I don't know if I know anybody else here or not. I don't think so. Do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, one of the yeah. things I'd like to say too, um, we open up our meetings, um, uh, our landfill, the host meeting, Riley Township <coughs> came out, full force. She brought a bus full of people out. 
Um, and I thought the meeting was awesome, right? I wish yeah. other townships would take us up on it, to be quite honest. Yeah, it was great. So far. And, and I don't think they realize, you know, when you get out there and see it, and, you know, some of the people have been <coughs> for or against, but question and answers, I thought the meeting was fantastic. I hope your residents found it. Yeah, the residents loved it. Yeah, and you can probably 30 guys out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're still yeah. talking yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, I mean, I would yeah. encourage you. Yeah. I'd encourage you. On that note, I believe Columbus Township is entering into an agreement. I don't know if you went forward with Matt Williams as far as Bradley Township at the landfill. No. And it's going to reduce your cost substantially, so if you want to pursue that, Columbus is going through with it. Now Cockerbill started it, and you'll probably see 10 to 15 percent savings in your cost for your current contract. We'll have to get back. Really, one of our stumbling blocks in that was the uh, special assessment right. here. Now, even though there was a saving, by the time you trickle that back to the residents, but there's a lot of paperwork has, and expenses. Columbus has the same thing, Do anything? and you can have it here, and you can draft that special assessment to address any uh, financial concerns. Well, we'll talk about it again, Matt. Great. Right. All right. Uh, at this time, do we have any citizens wishing to address the board? Any citizens wishing to address the board? All right, seeing none, we will move on to unfinished business. We have none, we'll move on to new business. On uh, 11A, approval of the county disbursements, May of 2016. I'm going to make the motion to approve the county disbursements for um, May 2016, the amount of 10 million nine hundred and eighty. Four thousand seven hundred eighty-five dollars and fifty-seven cents. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Greytop. Yes. Mr. McConnell. Yes. Mr. Bohm. Yes. Mr. Tomian. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Commissioner Heideman. Yes. Commissioner Rushing. Yes. Motion passed. We'll move on to 11B. Board of Health Appointment, District 1. I would make a, mo a motion to appoint Arnold Coombs, representing District 1, to the Health Advisory Board for the remainder of a two-year term, expiring 12 31 16 Board? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Moving on to 11C. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would move the approval of the equipment lease agreement with applied imaging for the library in the amount of $16,538.46 for a term of 39 months. Support. Any discussion? <coughs> I don't know if Allison would want to address it at all, but uh, make Dr. Perry on this. And, uh, okay. Only if there are questions or concerns. I know that's not covered enough, but okay. All in favor? Aye. Oh, Aye. we need a roll call. Yeah, roll. I'm sorry. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Tamian? Yes. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Greytop? Yes. Commissioner Heideman? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner McConnell? Yes. Chairman Rushy? Yes. Motion passed. We'll move on to 11D. And this would be the maintenance agreement for the applied imaging. That's what that is. Chairman, at this time I move to approve the maintenance agreement with applied imaging for the library for a 39 month term in the amount not to exceed $14,500. Have a second? Second. Any discussion? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Tommy? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Greytop? Yes. Mr. McConnell? Yes. Mr. Heideman? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Chairman Rush? Yes. Moving on to 11E, the 2017-2021 Cooperative Reimbursement Program application for the prosecuting attorney. Sir Chairman Rushing, I would move to approve the 2017 through 2021 Cooperative Reimbursement Program application in the amount of $1,514,077. Yes. Any discussion? And I believe we need to roll call on this. Commissioner Greytop? Yes. Commissioner McConnell? Yes. Commissioner Heideman? Yes. Commissioner Bohm? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Tommy? Yes. Chairman Russian. Yes. Moving on to 11F. The 2000. Your Emperor Russian, I would like to approve the application for the front of the court to cooperate cooperative reimbursement program for 2017 to 2021 in the amount of $18,864.34. Uh, Have a second? Support. 
Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Heidemann? Yes. Commissioner Bohm? Yes. Commissioner Greytop? Yes. Commissioner Tanian? Yes. Commissioner McConnell? Yes. Commissioner Rush? Yes. All right, moving on to 11G, fiscal year of 2016, Edward Bang Memorial Justice Program. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would move the approval of the 2016 Edward Bainey Memorial Justice Assistant Grant application in amount of $12,302. A second. Any discussion? We need a roll call on this? No, that's for the grant, right? That's no. not a match amount. Correct. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Moving on to 11H. Fiscal year 2016 Marine Safety Program Grant Agreement. Mr. Chairman, at this time I move to approve the 2016 Marine Safety Program Grant Agreement in the amount of $133,175. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Moving on to 11I, fiscal year 2017, Community Corrections Plan. Most Honorable Acting Chairman, I move that we approve the 2017 Community Corrections Plan and application in the amount of $361,000. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay, moving on to 11J, the Columbus Lodge Generator Hookup. Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the contract with BNT Electric in the amount of $13,660 for the installation of the generator hookup at the Columbus County Park Lodge. A second. Report. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bowman? Yes. Commissioner Greytop? Yes. Commissioner McConnell? Yes. Commissioner Tamian? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes, sir. Commissioner Heidemann? Yes. Chairman Rushing? Yes. All right, moving on to 11K, St. Clair County Master Plan Update, authorization, authorization to distribute draft plan. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would move to authorize the distribution of the draft St. Clair County Master Plan. I have a second? Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion passed. Moving on to 11L, Retirement Board Appointment. Uh, I would make a motion to appoint Kerry Hefton to the Retirement Board as the BOC representative for the remainder of a one-year term, expiring 12, 31, and 16. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Moving on to 11M, Building Authority Reappointments. Our majestic temporary chairman. <laughs> I move to appoint Danielle Hazelwood and reappoint Dina Alderdice and Terry Hefting to the Building Authority of St. Clair County each for the remainder of a three-year term expiring December 31st, 2016. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Motion passed. At this time, uh, moving on to the administrator's report. Um, just a couple things this evening. Yesterday, our new HR director started, so next time you're in the building, take a chance to go over to HR and introduce yourself. My name is Diane Farber. She comes to us with a lot of HR experience in a variety of different areas, and I think she's going to get great asset to the county. Looking forward to her new ideas. Um, our audit is complete. We're about two, three weeks ahead of schedule. I should have statements early next week available for anyone that wants them, and then they'll be available on our website as well. Our library director, Allison Arnold, is going to be interviewed by C-SPAN on Monday, and they're going to feature our county library system, and that will air um, sometime August. on August 6th or 7th. For book TV. Gary or Allison, will you keep us up to speed on everything that happens there? You Send bet. out some notices and let us know. You and bet. then when it gets ready, give us the definite date and we'll. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a part of their 2016 city tour, and they uh, chose Port Huron, so they've also communicated with the local museum and the community foundation. But uh, this morning, the <coughs> communication came through that they'd like to uh, feature the St. Clair County Library System. So. Very excited yeah, about it. 
Just tell them how smart the chairman is. Yeah. <laughs> the honorable <laughs> current chair. Yeah. Was, was that our temporary chair? For the record, <laughs> which chair? <laughs> What the county commissioner sits on the library board? <laughs> there is no county commissioner on the library board, but the liaison is here. If you'd like to come, one o'clock, they're filming. Very much. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, one last thing. SMG's offices should be complete this week. The furniture is scheduled to be installed next week, so we hope that we will be moved in by the end of next week. All right. And that's it. Uh, now, what I would like to do is carry Hefting has taken over. This is their first board, full board meeting as our new county administrator taking over for Bill Kaufman. I want to make that note also. Now, if you need another surprise, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Can I have a motion to accept the administrator's report? So moved. Support. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Do you have any miscellaneous business? I, I forgot. To, Clevis went live today. Great. And, and went off without a hitch. So Would you explain that a little bit? What it is? It's, I know Bill Graytop is very Bill's, familiar. Bill's, how long were you working on this, Bill? How long has Clemus been two, in the process? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Clemus is a program that the, the police, de everybody can use, I guess, but the police department's going to have most use out of it where they can um, get up-to-date information on everything that's going on. Um, I mean, I don't know how that's based. It's an it's an information system. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a, it's software based. It's an informational system, records management system. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, use it for um, central dispatch, which is a piece that just went live with us. Uh, the neat part about this Clemens system is, in southeastern Michigan, there are about a hundred different agencies that are currently using Clemens, which is based in Oakland County. They developed it, and and now that we are a member, we are a part member. It's like a condominium thing. You own a part of that system. So all the money that we put into it goes to develop it and comes right back to us. So it's a, it's a great way to, to do business. Um, if, uh, for example, uh, you get a description of a, of, a, of a guy with a gold name tag on and a kind of striped shirt on and he sits there with his arms folded and he's got a gold watch and he sticks up a local store down here and he does that two or three times and maybe he does it over in Belleville, Michigan and then he does it over here and he does it over here. Clemens picks up on that information. And, and all of a sudden he comes into Port Huron or he comes into Riley Township and he does the same type of thing, boom, you've got it right there. Those are things that are just, uh, you can't buy that sort of information and it's only available if you're in the Clemens system. So um, I think now Port Huron is on it. All of the entities that are law enforcement agencies in St. Clair County are on it except for Clay Township who has their own dispatch system. But everybody else is on Clemens now. And the system is going to, it'll take, there'll, there'll be a little couple of bugs here and there, but it's going to come together to where it's going to flow seamlessly and it's going to be better for everybody. Not only on a public safety issue, correct me if I'm wrong, but in addition, it's going to help the officers now use the sheriff's department because that's the easiest one. When they're out on the field, it'll greatly save time savings for the information they have to do, hitting the leans and everything, rather than wait for uh, the information to go through central dispatch and all that. It's going to greatly assist. And be a cost savings to the county because it will give them the information. All of their all of their records are right in the computer in the car. They don't have to go in to the station to do reports or anything like that anymore. It, it's interesting. Um, when the cameras turned off, I'll tell you a short story if you want to hear it about uh, an experience I had with Clemens one night, but I can't do it on the camera. Um, <laughs> but it was um, um, it, it, it does a lot of a lot of good stuff. So. The, you 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 were you were found not guilty then. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't even and part of the whole thing on the county of Plymouth, and I'll have to explain that in detail a little later on. All right, Mr. McGuinn. What, what was the reason that uh, it took so long to go into effect? It yeah. was a combination of all kinds of things. First off, we did not have a um, fiber optic system that went all the way over to Oakland County. So Lapeer was putting their system in, then we had to go to AT&T and pick up that... that uh, so there's another term for it. I don't know if anybody can help me out with this term. I can't remember it now. But there's a there's another type of a cable or line that they can T1. hook up. T1. No, it wasn't T1. There's a, there's a completely different name to it. Well, anyway, we had to pay for that system to get in. And once that was hooked up, and that went to appear, and they finished their system, and they shot over that way, we kind of piggybacked through their system that way. But um, we were the largest entity that they had picked up over 
all of the time that they have been working on this Clemens system and to make everything work with the dispatch, with the record keeping, with everything, so that Port Huron and St. Clair and everybody else that was on this system, it all worked seamlessly. It just took forever. And then our IT department, because we have firewalls and we have trap doors and all kinds of things that we need to keep an eye on. Isn't that a term, trap door? It is if you say so. It sounds good. And, yes, yeah. <laughs> um, they had to make sure that everything that they put in place would allow this information to flow freely in both directions. Who is the administrator of that? Single administrator. I mean, who there's, is the head of yeah, there's, there, there's one guy. I'll, I'll get his name for you. I, I'm just curious. Oh. I mean, Where are you talking? You mean from the count, from our county? No, from I, I mean county? the whole. He's an it's open it's, it's open it's owned by multiple right. agencies. Okay. Have, right. uh, have a state. And we went to look at different software. To, talking these software programs are you know a million dollar right. kind of stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, some of these things are crazy. Columbus is a collective, you know, through a whole bunch of people who you share their portions. Much less money than. All the other alternatives um, when you look at um, it. And far superior product to before that. So we pay an annual fee to Open County then? Is that the yes. Clemens Board? Yeah. To the Clemens Board, not to Open County, but to the Clemens Board. board. Yeah. And that, so money, board. that money goes back in to redevelop software. And so everything that you pay <coughs> it comes back to you by developing your system. It's not like tomorrow we have to go down the road and we see this all the time with our stuff. We are constantly buying mm -hmm. and upgrading our software. Okay, it's four years old, we need to upgrade it. We're constantly upgrading uh, the Clemens system, and we are a member of it. And we have, I don't know how many seats we have on the board, there are one or two seats that we will have on the board. So we have a say in what happens there. Now, those fiber optics, part, part of those run along the railroad tracks there? And no, no, they're not allowed to run along the railroad tracks because the, the uh, rail, the, the metal in the rail interferes with the fiber optics. I think you're mistaken. You can cross over them, but you can't run through them. Mr. Chair, we actually buried miles of it. Not as under it, but go ahead. I, I would just like to say, when we discussed the, going to the climate system, uh, I think every law enforcement uh, agency in the county uh, was very supportive, but with perhaps the exception of Clay Township. And so, you know, it was a pretty easy decision for us to make. Uh, our sheriff wanted it. Uh, our city uh, chief wanted it. Uh, Marysville wanted it. On down the line, so and it's going to greatly uh, assist public safety. This is going to be a great tool. It also offers a cafeteria style piece to it in that you can opt for additional pieces if you want to. For example, a fingerprint scanner, a mobile fingerprint scanner. Um, you get stopped on the side of the road, they'll come over with the fingerprint scanner, take your fingerprint, shoots it in, shoots it back, tells exactly who you are, and can look at your record based on what they see in research. You pay a little extra for it, but it's an option that's available. That's how I'm going to That's how I'm going to We'll hear about that later. <laughs> so they were able to identify you. Right on the roadside. All right, do we have any other miscellaneous business? Uh, I'm just going to talk about one thing quickly. I didn't touch in my report. I got an opportunity to go up to the Detroit Regional uh, Chamber Conference in Madison all this year. There was 11 different individuals from Suncor County that went in different um, things. Uh, Randy Myers from Community Foundation, Myers City the CBD, WPHM radio station, all that stuff. Um, we had never uh, collectively went out there as a group forever, right? Suncor County, it's oh, Macomb County, it's Oakland County, it's Wayne County. So I get a chance to go to you know, a fair amount of seminars and do a lot of stuff. But I can tell you this is the best seminar that I've ever attended as far as making connections and connecting the dots. I have some follow-up meetings. And, uh, Mark Hackle's going to be out actually on Monday the 27th. There's three or four issues that they're interested in that uh, you know affect both of us. That, that, that is going to be good for both parties involved. Uh, the fellow from Macomb County, the Academic Development Director, we went up there with the intent. He said, if everybody can pick up three to five connections, if you don't, if you think about that, when you have 11 different people from different disciplines. There's 33 to 55 different connections that we can bring back home, per se. And as part of our Blue Meets Green and a lot of the collaborative stuff that we do with all these people, these are the people that are part of our group, uh, ones that we're meeting on a regular basis, so on and so forth, which kind of parlays into my little cranes story here. If you look, sections 9 through uh, pages 9 through 17, 
for those of you that aren't familiar with Cranes, Cranes is the magazine that is read by the business community in the Metro Detroit area, by and on, okay? We had nine great stories, you know, articles, those things. We've been working um, with Cranes and uh, the editor, Mary Cranes, for some time. And actually, Randy Fernandez made the initial connection with them. And so it's all this, you know, we have a lot of great things out there. But we can tell our stories to ourselves, but if we don't tell our story on a much larger platform, a lot of these things aren't going to happen. And, you know, I think we today, with a lot of the extreme, a lot of the different things that are happening, we have a great story to tell. Um, and just the, the amount of people that we met. We had a little meeting yesterday, which we got together and talked about all of our contacts and, and who we made in our field and those types of things. And it was, it was Best, uh, best thing that I've ever been to by now. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to follow up on what uh, uh, Chair Bone has uh, indicated. For those uh, people that would like to go to uh, internet TV, ebw.tv, uh, they can see uh, Chairman Bone and, and uh, uh, Executive Mark Hagel from uh, Macomb County uh, discussing many of the things that you're talking about. And it would be well worth your time to uh, get an option. The WPHM 13 and go to the podcasts. Uh, they had the governor on there. They had David Peters on there. They had Mark Hackle. They had Candace Miller. They had Staple. I mean, there was a whole slew of people that they had on there. And a lot of them uh, talked about St. Clair County and a lot of different things. You'd be surprised at how, how many of those different elected officials um, identify with our region in some capacity and understand it. So it's really it's just another one of those things that you know, I know people say, why would you go to something like that? I can tell you being in my position, we probably should, well, we probably shouldn't be going 10 years ago because we quite honestly we didn't have our act together at the time. But now collectively with all the collaboration with all the other partners. You started getting your act together about six years ago, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> great, time, great talking to you. Anything happened to Riley Township? Who was first? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll tell you, this is done one of the guys who was done. They've got, a, I, in my opinion, a fantastic board currently, and uh, I've got done a great deal. you first? Were you first on the board? Well, well, no, well, I was the uh, <laughs> county clerk made an out in the field call, remember? Oh, yeah. And I was on the board first. Yeah. All right, any other miscellaneous business? <laughs> We'll move on to 14, we see the Mr. Bible. Chairman and past township supervisor and railroad mobile, rushing, I move to receive and file packets that were sent to commissioners, packets at their places, and any other information presented. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Move. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned.